I've had some more life. <laughs> a lot of people were confused when I cast Heath. Here's my card. I know that there's some sort of strange gossip and rumors, you know. They'll hate you for it. Christian is very, very intense. But that's the point of Batman. These scenes have to look spectacular. So there's no way that I was going to manage that. That was a big, huge ride. Chris really reinvigorated the whole franchise. <laughs> it's like amazing. Here we go. Welcome to a space special, The Dark Knight Unmasked. This highly anticipated sequel to director Christopher Nolan's ambitious reboot of the Batman movie franchise takes place six months after Batman Begins. And the story features several new characters, including Harvey Dent and the Joker. Action. We're tonight's entertainment. The movie is arguably the one of the great action movies ever made. It's just fantastic. People flying and things blowing up. I mean, it's not, it's, I don't usually go see movies like this, but this one has that, all of that stuff, and also real interactions between people. Gotham needs a hero with a face. The slightly gritty, slightly more real idea we had of, of what Gotham could be in Batman Begins, we wanted to push that even further. They'll hate you for it. But that's the point of Batman. I remember when we finished the last one, I said, what's the next one going to be like? He said, darker, much darker. And it is. <laughs> I wanted this to be very much a sort of city story, if you like. You know, the kind of film, you know, like Michael Mann's Heat, that kind of thing. That's where I wanted to find the, the scale of the film that would expand from, from the first film. You feel like you're in Gotham. You know, you feel like you're in this crooked, broken, corrupt, dirty, but also kind of a thrilling city. For me, it's just a process of looking at tonally, you know, how do these characters fit in with, with this world and trying to come up with, a, you know, a cohesive combination of the character and setting and tone and, and style of the film. There's a great deal of ethical questions that, that Chris has introduced in this uh, new movie. People are dying, Alfred. Of somebody who has attained this power. What would you have me do? And how something seemingly good... Endure, Master Wayne. ...can actually end up causing a great deal of trouble. Should we give in to this terrorist demands? Do we really think We'd that he's gonna... rather protect an outlaw vigilante than the lives of citizens? Justice meets injustice and in, in trying to deal with the two, and how do you deal with it when it's more powerful than you are? There's a new crime boss that's sort of taken over, and Gordon with Batman are working on this sting, and then in the middle of that uh, is this sort of hand grenade, which is uh, Heath Ledger's Joker. You'll see. I'll show you. Joker, just as an icon, is one of the great villains in literature. He's diabolical, charming, funny, uh, completely enjoyable to watch. One of those people you can't take your eyes off of. He's very charismatic, he can be very funny, he can be very innocent seeming, but under, underneath he's thoroughly evil. He's somebody who, you know, like many kind of lifestyle gurus would actually say, hey man, he's in the present, you know, he's living just for the moment, you know, he's doing that thing that everyone says. But the, the problem is that his present is that he just loves destruction. He's completely random. He's not tied to any kind of moral system. That if he fits into anything too well, he wants to smash it up. He's an opponent who, who has been on destruction for its own sake and, uh, and has no fear of self-destruction at all. It's hard to deal with a villain that doesn't care. You know, because what are you going to do to him? He's out of control, you know? He doesn't care about people. He's a murderer, he has no conscience. He's literally the opposite of Batman. The Joker has no limits. Whereas Batman has this, he has morality to him, you know? He's, he's uh, the whole point is, he's, he's altruistic. He wants to, he wants the outcome to be good, and he, he will not kill. Kill the Batman. It was intense, but a joy to sort of work to work with him. Here's my card. I know that there's some sort of strange gossip and rumors, you know, that he let the part go to his head. Welcome back 
to the Dark Knight Unmasked. Batman was created in the late 1930s by cartoonist Bob Kane, and 60 years later, Batman is still a vital force in popular culture. Christian Bale's portrayal of Batman draws on the rich history of the character. Know your limits, Master Wayne. Batman has no limits. Well, you do, sir. Well, can't afford to know him. I think Christian clearly embodies the intensity and the, and the notion of, of self-discipline and dedication that the Bruce Wayne would have to have to become Batman. Jumping out of an airplane is pretty straightforward. And what about getting back into the plane? I'd recommend a good travel agent without it landing. He has no superpowers in the story. He's simply, honestly, he's a guy who just does a lot of push-ups. The famous Bruce Wayne. Rachel's told me everything about you. I certainly hope not. Christian himself is, um, is uh, as a presence. So let's put a couple tables together. I'm not sure that they'll let us. Oh, they should. I own the place. Christian is very, very intense. You know, you can play an entire scene with him absolutely still, just looking in his eyes. You know that day that you once told me about when Gotham would no longer need Batman? It's coming. You can't ask me to wait for that. It's happening now. When he has the bat suit on or off, you know, he has an intensity and a, a piercing um, quality about him. Gotham needs a hero in the face. You throw a party, Wayne, I'll give you that. Thanks again. I think the dedication he has as an actor to what he does is very analogous to what Bruce Wayne would need to become Batman. I wanted to give it kind of a definitive portrayal and one that was much more truthful and loyal to Bob Kane and then also to Frank Miller with his graphic novels and Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale and to these um, uh, depictions of Batman that most people would not be aware of. Batman dresses up like a bad guy and behaves like a bad guy. I'd want him to have him on my side, but I don't know if I'd want to take him to dinner. Batman, on some kind of weird platonic level, still has power for me. And the idea that anybody could be Batman, you just need to be that dedicated. Bruce witnesses his parents getting killed. And this becomes sort of the obvious, for obvious reasons, the seminal, primal moment in his life, and that forms everything that, that he, you know, would become from that. He's a figure who's taken a, a lot of the, the negative emotions that he feels, a lot of the very powerful, dark things that he feels, and made something positive. He has endured this horrific experience and he carries with him this very, very powerful sense of rage against criminality. I think Batman is the modern tragic hero who decides that in, in order to make sense of the world, he's got to sort of impress his own definition of justice on, on the world that orbits around him. I just knew him from the TV series and the movies. And I never saw that darkness particularly, you know? I, it just, it was never that strong for me. And so when I read the graphic novels, it was a complete surprise. And I was amazed that Pete's, nobody had ever portrayed him in such a way before. Tell us, Mr. Wayne. What do you fear? Obviously with the loss of his parents that, that Chris beautifully shot in the first film, you know, being at the opera and, and losing his family, uh, obviously gives him the impetus for change. As a symbol, I can be incorruptible. I can be everlasting. What symbol? Something elemental, something terrifying. It seemed to me a very strange gap in movies, really, but, but also even in the comics, it's tended to be treated in, in montage and in sort of flashback. If you make yourself more than just a man. So it seemed like a great opportunity. I mean, you don't find these kind of little gaps in pop culture very often. Then you become something else entirely. Which is a legend. Not today I found out what Batman can't do. He can't endure this. Today you get to say I told you so. All of the characterization, all the psychology really relates to his childhood trauma and the way in which that's a 
affecting his journey and who he wants to become. More copycats last night, Alfred, with guns. Why don't you hide them and take the weekend off? I wasn't exactly what I had in mind when uh, I said I wanted to inspire people. He has this psyche that is so damaged and bent and just wrong, you know? The things have been proved. Look at the new district attorney. I am closely. He also has this altruism and this desire to do good and, uh, you know, he's a philanthropist. But he could very easily become uh, uh, far more excessively violent than they could ever dream of. You know, this is the thing which I find interesting with him. Are you interested in his character or his uh, social self? Having fully realized that persona, you get to really launch into the story from a very different place. If I get him to you, can you get him to talk? I'll get him to sing. We wanted this film to be a really definitive kind of version of, of you know, what we wanted to do with Batman. So we really tried to put everything into into this movie. Things will get ugly. I knew the risk when I took this job, Lieutenant. How are you getting back in? I just love what Chris did to it. You know, he just really reinvigorated the whole franchise and brought the darkness and the richness back to it. He does that. Well, hello, beautiful. I think Heath was just in an incredibly unusual and remarkable place. We're tonight's entertainment. In, in the makeup and in the, in the suit and everything, he just was staying right in character the whole yeah. time. Welcome back to the dark...